application of the first law to motivate the use of property called as enthalpy. Uh, let's Im imagine an adiabatic process, an adiabatic steady throttling, throttling of a gas, uh, a gas which is passing through a wall or any other restriction. So let's say imagine like we have got a wall uh, somewhere here uh, and a gas is passing from the upstream which actually is at state one to the downstream which is actually at state two somewhere. Uh, let's imagine like the pressure at the upstream is V1, volume V1 and internal energy U1. And let's say uh, the pressure at the downstream is equal to P2, volume V2 and internal U2. Let the process be adiabatic process. That means like there should be no heat flowing into and out of the system. So there is actually a restriction that there is no energy in the heat energy is getting into the system and then there is no heat energy which is leaving out of the system. So there is the, the process is adiabatic process. And the process is also the steady flow, steady flow like there is no actually change in the kinetic energy, there, there's no change in the mass and there is no change in the in the velocity like this. So let's say let's say um, first first thing first we we would define what actually we mean by the upstream and what do we mean by the downstream process and what or in other word what is actually state one and what is actually state two. Let's imagine like uh, uh, the above in you know, above pipe. Let's imagine like we have got a volume uh, sorry a wall um, at state one. What would happen that there is a volume of a gas. And that volume of a gas is somewhere we would say like we have got imaginary piston let's say and we have got a volume of a gas which is somewhere at state one over here and that mean like we would be having a pressure p1 volume which is actually over here v1 and internal energy u1 over here so this is actually our state one please make sure like the wall is including in the system. I would explain it a little bit later as well. Then I'm going to the downstream. That means like I am actually moving this volume over here to volume somewhere over on this side, which is actually at state two. So what is actually state two now? State two would be somewhere, let's say again, imaginary piston and cylinder, sorry, piston. So that means like, I'm moving from that state which was actually up here as well. I'm moving this volume to state 2 which is somewhere here. Make sure if you can and that's what actually it would look like initial state that would be state 1. So we have got a volume pressure P1 here, volume V1 here and internal energy U1 here. And we are moving this whole thing from this side of the wall to another side of the wall which is actually at the final state uh, can you just imagine like the wall itself is including in both of the system or uh, both of the state this is just a, a very quick imagination like if i'm talking about let's say uh, i'm inside this in the in the class and uh, i'm actually going outside the class so that means like the door itself is common between inside and outside so if I'm inside the door, that means like I'm inside the class. And if I'm outside the door, that means like I'm outside the class. So in, this, in other word, if I'm saying like, if I'm on this side of the, the wall, then I'm on a state one. And if I'm on this side of the wall, I'm on a state, state two actually. So we define this system in a very simple manner. Like we have got a pressure, P1, vo volume V1 and internal energy. U1 going from state 1 to a pressure P2, volume V2, and internal energy U2. Actually. Going to the first law of thermodynamics, and that's a what kind of a work it is actually. If I'm saying like I'm moving, moving from uh, state 1 to state 2, so let's say if I would say like change in internal energy would be equal to heat supplied minus work done. So that is my first law of thermodynamics. So 
as the process is adiabatic so that would be somewhere here so change in internal energy would be equal to minus w now let's say what kind of a work it would be that would be equal to the flow work what is actually a flow work the flow work is actually the pressure p1 which would be pushing the volume v1 from the wall to a pressure p2 and the volume v2 that means like the pressure p1 is responsible to push the volume v1 from the wall from the upstream to the downstream so in other words what would be the work done itself the work done would be equal to w would be equal to p2 v2 minus p1 v1 that mean like the pressure at the final multiplied by the volume at the final minus pressure in initial and volume at the initial so that would be actually equal to this one. so that mean like this is what we call it or what we would define as the flow work now moving up there back to the equation which is somewhere here or just over here so the change in internal energy would be equal to or in other word change in internal energy is equal to minus w in other word u2 minus u1 would be equal to p1 v1 minus p2 p2 make sure i've changed the change the sign and p1 v1 minus p2 v2 would be there just moving uh, or rearranging this one that would be equal to u1 plus p1 v1 would be equal to u2 plus p2 v2 that means that the sum of internal energy and the flow energy initially is equal to the sum of internal energy and flow energy finally or that in other words the total energy which was present in the system at the upstream would be equal to total energy at the downstream in a throttling process in a process in which actually the volume move from state one to state two now this this property which is actually u plus pv this property this property or this quantity is defined as the enthalpy what is actually enthalpy itself enthalpy itself is sum of internal energy and the flow energy in other words what i'm saying like if you have got the internal energy in a system and if you have got the flow energy in a system the sum of the, them two energy would be equal to enthalpy now make sure over here if internal energy is missing in a system so you cannot call enthalpy as flow energy because flow energy itself is an energy itself if the flow energy is missing in a system you cannot call internal energy in a as a enthalpy so enthalpy would be only and only defined when both of the energy which is actually internal energy and the flow energy they are present inside the system so enthalpy is a property which is actually defined as a sum of internal energy and flow energy now again moving back to the what actually we have said like what is actually enthalpy or what is actually enthalpy energy it was the energy which was responsible from moving the volume v1 from upstream or from state one to volume v2 which was actually at state two now so that mean like when we are talking about the enthalpy enthalpy mean like there is actually a flow energy in a system there is actually energy internal energy in a system 
and when this flow energy and internal energy move from one state to another state then that mean like we are moving from one enthalpy state to another enthalpy state enthalpy again would be defined at the term of um, microscopic level and enthalpy again is defined as the state function so we have defined different state function right now we have defined pressure as a state function temperature as a state function volume as a state function internal energy as a state function and now we have defined enthalpy as a state function too we are left with one more property which will be defined in a second law of thermodynamics and that was what actually we call it as the entropy so we have defined many state function in a what we will be using in a thermodynamics yes you can read it out and if you have got any question you can raise it to your classroom now in your previous knowledge you might have defined enthalpy as the total energy so that means like enthalpy is a total energy that is correct when we can say like the process was adiabatic when there was no other work done in it so the only and only energy we were having was the internal energy and the flow energy so that's why it was called as the total energy enthalpy is also sometimes called as the heat content of the system so it is only and only called as heat content of the system when we are talking about the isobaric process when the heat is supplied in isobaric process we will be actually just uh, deriving this equation right now so let's say quasi expansion or quasi static expansion of the gases and that is actually at a cause constant pressure process or isobaric process so let's say having first law of thermodynamic first law of thermodynamic is equal to change in internal energy plus work done so heat supply is equal to change in internal energy plus work done so if it is a constant pressure process so constant pressure process p v2 minus v1 is equal to work done if you can imagine and change in internal energy is equal to u2 minus u1 uh, just open it up and that would be u2 plus p v2 and u1 plus p v1 so you can imagine you have got the internal energy you have got the flow energy you have got the internal energy you can have got the flow energy so whenever you have got these two energies just bracket them and call it as the enthalpy so q would be equal to h2 minus h1 so i'm just writing in a in total terms so h2 minus h1 and that mean like the heat supplied in a constant pressure process is equal to change in the enthalpy so that's what what we call it as the total heat content of the system but that is what actually we call it as a the, the heat supplied in in a constant pressure is equal to when we are talking about the change in enthalpy only the first law in terms of enthalpy let's say in our last few pages we did say like the internal energy would be equal to heat transfer minus work done now this work done for a quasi equilibrium process was equal to p dv you can imagine like we have done a lot of time that's the so that being like change in internal energy would be equal to pdv so pdv is equal to work done only and only in a quasi static process while you can imagine like work done can be any kind of a work done so the above equation which is equal to change in internal energy is equal to q minus w it is true for any process whether it is a quasi equilibrium process whether it's any other kind of a process um non quasi equilibrium process irreversible process reversible process so this this equation is true but this equation which is actually change in internal in energy is equal to uh, q minus pdv that's the only and only valid when the process is at uh, the quasi quasi static process um h is equal to u plus pv is there there so can you just put them so h is equal to u plus 
uh, just differentiate using a chain route or you you just call it uh, i would say like whether it's a chain rule or product route can you just change it accordingly if, if you think like it's not a chain or a product so the so just differentiate using the the product rule so the h would be equal to the u plus pdv plus pdv now u plus pdv uh, is equal to heat supply if i would say like and vdp is there just just uh, um, just say like this this is actually the uh, first of thermodynamics in terms of enthalpy um, and that is valid for the any process just moving them to equation over here so this equation is valid for any any process and this equation is valid for the only and only cause equilibrium process thank you very much uh, i hope you would understand all of these uh, concepts if you have got any questions please raise your in a classroom and i would be able to answer them